Thank you very much, uh, Woody, for your presentation. Verint is one of the uh, well-known Israeli companies that we are very proud of. And I think they are the one of the main companies who made such a big difference when they changed their activities, not only to intelligence, but also to cyber. So I think what we should learn from uh, Houdi, Professor Ben Israel is not here, he always told me, every time somebody is speaking, give him a, a label or a header about what he spoke. So we heard about the need for a network backbone solutions, achieve effective national cyber defense. The next speaker is Mr. Yochai Kurem. Mr. Yochai Kurem is the VP Marketing Products, Intelligence and Cyber Solutions from Elbit System, one of the very big Israeli companies. I'll say the same about IAI later because I still have friends in both of the companies. Mr. Yochai Kurem is the Vice President for Marketing and Products in Elbit Cyber Security and Intelligence Division Heading the, uh, leading the marketing product and pre-sale activities related to cyber defense as well as cyber collection and intelligence solutions. Yochai combines his cyber intelligence experience and technical training with big picture pers perspective to understand the cyber market, its customers, and competitive landscape when defining the roadmaps for Elbit cyber offering. Prior to his current role, Yochai was the VP product and services at 3i Mind, where he was uh, responsible for the strategy, marketing, and intelligence services for the company proprietary solutions to deep web harvesting and analysis. Uh, Yochai is going to uh, speak today with us about cyber defense industry view, and I invite Yochai to the podium. Thank you. So hello everybody, thank you, how do you start the presentation? So until it starts, uh, thank you Ryan for the introduction, I'll try to do it uh, without the visual aids. I wanted to start my presentation, and if someone in the technical team can uh, help me. Uh, by comparing uh, cyber with a historical notion which happened uh, more than half to 150 years ago, which is uh, the gold rush period in the World Wide West. There we had, um, as, uh, there we had uh, gold miners go, find new gold, build new cities and towns, new businesses are established, and business-to-business uh, -business activity started. However, it was not such a safe era for the businesses in the Old Wide West because a uh, few, uh, few, can someone help with that uh, presentation? Cyber attack, right? Okay. Never mind. I know it by heart anyway. Uh, so, they had some problems because some people, like Jimmy Ray and other bandits, decided that instead of earning money by working, they can just trade the coach wagons and the trains, uh, picking the gold and moving it uh, from one place to another. And they uh, did a lot of uh, income uh, that way. Yes. Yeah. I have it on my computer if it's uh, helpful. Anyway, we'll continue like that. I think it's, it's better fun. Wells and Fargo in 1880, uh, 1880 um, sent a report that the businesses had so much because of these uh, uh, bandits that they have decided to form an army or uh, force actually to protect the trains and the wagons uh, that transport the gold and the money. So they spent a lot of budget by, of building this, uh, um, let's say, infrastructure or uh, security infrastructure to protect the communication lines between the different cities. Only years later, 
some governors have decided that it is the state's responsibility to um, include uh, a safe mechanism to protect the businesses by forming uh, state military forces and going after the bandits. So it is the state responsibility to protect the businesses, the communication lines from outside uh, forces trying to attack and to uh, um, cause problems to those businesses. Now, I had some beautiful slides, believe me. Um, I tried to compare between this uh, arena of 130 years ago, where it took time for governments to understand that it is their responsibility to protect the business and the communication lines to what we are suffering today, I would say, in the cyber arena, where we have a situation where government only start to understand that it's not enough that, that organization, uh, different organizations protect themselves uh, from different uh, cyber attacks by implying more and more appliances and more and more tools like we've seen here today. It's the government, um, should be a priority to the government, and we start seeing that here in Israel now and also some other places around the world, to include tools and to defend the citizens and the businesses within the country. So it's, it's a national problem today. Uh, we see it, it's not, and we call it in Elbit the fifth uh, dimension of protection. So it's not only land and sea and naval and space, which is the fourth dimension, also the fifth dimension of protection, which means that government and nations should plan uh, the right tools and mechanism as if it was just the protect of the air or the land uh, from outside attacks. It's not only you know, military forces, the, the, the border between civilians, uh, organizations and military organizations are, um, you know, it's very hard to find them. I just heard that in, in last year in 2013 in the U.S. there are hundreds of different attacks on um, uh, health, in health uh, institutes where hundreds of thousands of personal information of patients in health institutes were, were stolen, were attacked by cyber attacks. Uh, it's maybe hard in the beginning to imagine why, but actually it is because, um, because you can use it for drug-related uh, illegal activities. Imagine that you have the prescription, uh, prescription for uh, a very expensive drug or for legal marijuana, etc. What you can do with that, of course, also the fake identities. So this is only one segment, the health segment, that is also attacked all the time. Of course, banks, utilities, energy, transportation, communication, etc. What can form all of those together, um, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard question, I'll try to answer it in a few minutes. I want also to use the quote, which you cannot see, from the current NSA uh, director, who said, uh, the problem is not in the technology, because he has, we have so much technology, it is in the organization. Another quote from him is, commanders must own the cybersecurity space and the cyber defense. So in my point of view, owning, meaning taking corrective actions uh, and the correct actions when something happens and managing the future for cyber protection in your organization requires knowledge. I think that today we are lacking the knowledge and it's very hard because cyber, and I see the people around here, is a technical domain. To transform it from technical domain into something that a person which is not technical, which is a manager, maybe 50, 60 years old, in most cases can feel and make decisions, is a hard problem. Uh, so education, I believe, should be a fundamental layer in this um, solution, national cyber solution, starting from schools, of course, and I see, I think, some representative over here, but also going to the managerial layer. Here, uh, us in Elbit, we've put a lot of emphasis, not only on uh, education, but also on training, uh, we have a very, I would say, good solution, uh, customers say so, for uh, hands-on training on cyber attacks so you can really experience what it means to be under cyber attack, what does it do to your organization, what does a security expert has to do and what does an analyst has to do and a manager need to do in such a case. And I can tell you I saw the most brilliant cyber defenders go to our system and start sweating when you know, they have the actual uh, attacks going on and they need to protect from it. Another point is the fact that it's very hard today uh, to centralize, and Udi mentioned some of the challenges, to centralize or to manage uh, a nationwide defense 
because we are lacking standards and common language between organizations. So let's say I would like an health uh, institute which is being attacked to report about it to one of the banks in the financial sector. Do they have today the current the same language? Do they speak the same language? I mean, digital, digitally. Do they know to share this information? Do one another know to interpret that? And I believe that the industry should uh, adopt common practices and standards uh, in related to cyber uh, communication and sharing cyber information, and the government should enforce that by using regulation and requesting those different organizations to use the same standards to uh, generate a common uh, common uh, discussion infrastructure. One more point. Um, I would like to differentiate between the national level uh, cyber defense, where, in contrary to what Woody said, I believe that, uh, especially in large or medium sized countries, it's very hard to concentrate all the traffic in one place. For example, some of the uh, uh, companies do not want uh, information to be shared with others. Um, and I would like to differentiate between a national level to a more sector level solution. In the sector level solution, where usually you have operational responsibility for the computers, you're able to actually check everything's going on uh, within the traffic. And believe me, we have solutions both for SCADA based or national critical infrastructure based uh, um, um, network, and of course also IT networks. So we have solutions for that. This requires one type of uh, protection. A different type is in the national level, where we believe it's very hard for people to tell one another, hey, I've been attacked. You need a lot of trust for uh, a bank CEO to tell the other, hey, I've been attacked. I don't actually know what exactly is the magnitude of the attack, right? But you should be aware now because you also possibly been attacked. This is something which requires a lot of trust. Of course, also a hospital can be a uh, train uh, a company, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. So from the national level, and I think this is very hard challenge of when, especially when the regulation is moving a little slowly, slowly than, the, than the hackers, you need to create an infrastructure of very, I would say, open communication. Some of it might need to be uh, anonymous between the different users, between the different uh, uh, elements in the country, both civilians, uh, government, etc. Oh, excellent. So here, here it is. Wow. From the beginning. I was getting to the end, but now we have to read it all again. Okay, can you? Uh, anyway. Yeah, the cyber attack is really variant, no? I'm kidding. If you can advance the slide for me, someone in the technical uh, office. Never mind. Sorry for. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the question is, how do you generate an infrastructure where people can, with a central entity in the country, a bureau of, of some kind, that is able to generate power in such a way that it can help people facilitate this discussion, be a central source of intelligence to share this intelligence with all the different agencies, and some of those agencies, again, civilian agency or companies or different sectors do not have the resources actually to invest enough in that. Um, so maybe to summarize, uh, I would say that today in 2014 still nations, uh, I believe, are only in early stages if comparing to what happened in the old Wild West in understanding that this is their responsibility to protect the civilians and the different organizations from cyber attacks. Um, and today, reality is that many organizations pay a lot of money uh, to that. 
if we are look, looking at the bank robbery, as by the way, in the U.S., uh, 900 million uh, dollars have been lost because of robberies. However, 12 billion dollars have been lost because of cyber attacks. So for sure now, uh, the country needs to do something, and it needs to uh, follow, first of all, education standards, okay, and decide where it wants to protect both in the sector level and in the national level. Thank you very much.